I'm Anil Kumar, sharing with you a question from my student, Melissa. Now she wants to understand how to find remainder of a polynomial when it is divided by a quadratic function. Now what we have really learned so far is that if we have a polynomial p of x and if it is divided by a binomial, let us say ax plus b, in that case remainder r of x is equal to the value of the polynomial for x equals to minus b by a. Right? So that is how you can find the remainder without doing long division by substituting the value of x as minus b by a. Now how do you get minus b by a? You get minus b by a by equating that ax plus b to 0, right? That makes it 0. So that is how you do it. Now the question is, if we have to divide a polynomial by a quadratic function, then how to find the remainder? There are many ways to do it. And here is probably the simplest way, which I'm going to discuss with you. So let's begin with this question itself. The question is, how to find remainder without division? Of course, you can do long division or synthetic division to find the remainder, but we have to do it without division when a polynomial is divided by quadratic function. So let's rewrite this question as x cubed minus 2x plus 5 divided by, now we can factor x square plus x minus 2 as product of minus 2 sum of plus 1, so that means x plus 2 times x minus 1. So we have to divide by this quadratic function. Now as you can see, if you divide by quadratic function, what kind of remainder do you expect? What should be the remainder? So we know the remainder should be linear, right? So remainder is one degree lower. One degree lower means, in this case, linear, which I could write as, let us say, ax plus b, general form. So what I'm saying is, let the remainder be ax plus b. Now we need to find the value of a and b, and then we'll know what the remainder is. Okay, how to do that? We know something that we'll use this remainder theorem in parts. If I divide x cubed minus 2x plus 5 by x plus 2, then what is going to be the remainder? Let us do that part first, right? So, so what we have here is, that this is the polynomial for us, right? This is the polynomial. So we can find the value of this polynomial for minus 2. So value of this polynomial for minus 2 is the remainder when you divide by x plus 2, correct, uh, will be equal to, I'll substitute minus 2 for x. So we have minus 2 whole cube minus 2 times minus 2 plus 5. Now we are saying that remainder is of this form. So in that case, what we can do is we can write minus 2 for x. So if I write minus 2 for x, we get a times minus 2 plus b. So we get one linear equation. Let's simplify this a bit. So we have minus 8, minus and minus is plus 4, plus 5, equals to minus 2a plus b. Now this could be written as, that is 9 minus 8 is 1, so we have 1 equal to minus 2a plus b. Let us call this as our equation number 1. Okay. Similarly, if I substitute plus 1 in this, then what happens? Then the value of the polynomial for plus 1 will be, we'll substitute 1 here, so we have 1 cube minus 2 times 1 plus 5 should be equal to, so that is the remainder, so I'll substitute 1 for x, I get a plus b. Now that simplifies to 1 minus 2 plus 3, that is 1 minus 2 is minus 1, and minus 1 plus 5 is 4, right? So 4 equals to a plus b. Let me call this as equation number 2. So we have 
two equations with two unknowns. So we can solve them very easily. So if I subtract one from the other, let us say we do equation 2 minus equation 1. Right? In that case, what do we get? Equation 2 minus 1. So if we do 4 minus 1. So that is, let me highlight these equations which we are working with. And then we'll take away one from the other. Equation 2 minus 1, so we get 3 here, right, equals to a minus 2a, that gives us 3a. b minus b is 0, so we get 3a equals to 3, or we get a equals to 1. So we get one solution, and that is a equals to 1. Now we can find the other solution, I mean, what b is, right, to get our solution. So we know a equals to 1. We can use one of these equations. Let us say a plus b is 4. You know, a plus b equals to 4. If I substitute 1 for a, I get b, right? So from here we can say b is equals to 4 minus 1, which is 3. Since we know what a and b are, we can say remainder is ax plus b, right? We started with ax plus b. So a is 1, b is 3, and therefore the remainder is 1 means x, b is 3 means x plus 3. So our answer is that the remainder is x plus 3, right? So that is how you could actually solve such a question. I hope that really helps. Thank you and all the best.